I'm Sarah Fergani with Kent's 5 News Now. A garage and two cars go up in flames overnight at a San Antonio home. The cause still unknown. This is video of firefighters around midnight at Ruby Oaks on the city's north side. They say the detached garage was completely engulfed in flames and two cars parked in front of it were burning. Luckily, that fire did not spread to the house and no one was hurt. New images out of South Padre Island after a terrifying day at the beach involving several shark attacks. The pictures show Border Patrol agents who were off duty at the time jumping in to try and save a swimmer who had just been attacked by a shark. The Border Patrol Laredo sector says the two agents pulled the person out of the water and began life-saving measures immediately. Now, this is video from DPS as they tracked the shark from the sky with drones and helicopters. We're told there were four shark attacks as people celebrated the 4th of July in the water. But officials think the same shark is responsible. They say two bite victims were taken to a hospital in Brownsville. A third was injured while trying to help one of the bite victims. And a fourth beachgoer says they felt a shark brush up against him. People say they were left in shock. It was not a real scene. It was like, how is this, how is this actually happening right now? Yeah. It, was, it, it was very surreal. I've lived here for 24 years. Uh, the last time I saw anything like this was about eight years ago. All four victims are said to be okay and recovering. Officials say the shark might have been near the shore because of the winds and was likely curious about the activity around it. Funeral services will be held today for a Navy veteran who died during a visit to San Antonio while celebrating his birthday. 26-year-old Jarvis McIntyre traveled here from St. Louis, Missouri back in June, but days later, Jarvis's body was mysteriously found in a wooded area on the northeast side. The circumstances leading up to his death are suspicious. After Jarvis died, the Bear County Medical Examiner performed an autopsy. Those results came back inconclusive. There was no apparent cause and manner of death. Then his family flew his body back home to Missouri and requested a second autopsy. They were still waiting on those results. But on June 14th, police found Jarvis's body off Holbrook Road. While detectives do not suspect foul play, his family told us they believe someone may have hurt him based off of his skin color or his sexual orientation. So they want a more in-depth investigation. If you know anything, give San Antonio police a call. After a vicious attack on a Bear County deputy earlier this week, we're learning brothers and sisters in blue saved his life. A total of four deputy constables were hurt on Wednesday while serving an eviction warrant at Auburn Creek apartment. They say a man hiding in the dark charged at them with a makeshift blade, slashing one of the deputies in the arm, cutting through his artery. Two or three weeks ago, San Antonio Police Department, their tactical uh, first aid uh, team, they had a class. Guess what saved my officer's life? That, that class and them knowing how to use that tourniquet. He would have bled out in two minutes. There's no way he would have made it to the hospital. That deputy has since been released from the hospital. Three other deputies suffered minor injuries. The suspect was eventually arrested. Barrel made landfall in Mexico with Texas up next on its projected path. Some of Mexico's most popular tourist destinations were in line of the storm. The Category 2 storm carried wind speeds of up to 110 miles an hour. People staying at resorts in Tulum were handed notes telling them they will be relocated. And as it shifts to Texas, our San Antonio Salvation Army and other local nonprofits are on standby. It's one of several organizations the governor has asked to be on standby to deploy necessary resources. If Barrel makes landfall in Texas, the Salvation Army Texas Command Center will be located in San Antonio. They have their mobile units and food trucks ready to go. We can prepare warm meals on the spot and we're able to serve uh, hundreds of meals uh, at a time. Now they told us the best way the public can help is by donating online on their website. Governor Abbott also directed the State Emergency Operations Center to increase its readiness to level two. That means more state resources will be ready to respond, including up to 1,000 National Guard personnel, around 200 search and rescue crews, plus helicopters, boats, and other equipment.